No, I'm not specifically an EDM producer, but sometimes I have clients who want help with their production. So today I'm gonna to show you how I try to recreate this Martin Garrix style drop. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys, it's Fabio here from Noise. Welcome back, and like I said, we're gonna be spending a little bit more time looking at production, because I know we did a lot of mixing and mastering last year. This year I wanna get a bit more nitty gritty. Now, I am a producer, I do also mix and master, and I have some clients who I help who do different genres of music, whether it's trap, EDM, some are singer-songwriters, and so on. It's a, it's a huge variety of music, and that's what I love about my job, is that I'm not so narrowed down to doing one thing. Although, I would say that electronic and dance music is definitely a little bit more popular amongst my clients. Now, when you understand production to a certain level, then you kind of get the idea about, you know, how things fit, or you're able to analyze a track, and analyzing music is one of the most powerful things you can do. Sometimes sitting down and making it is a lot of fun, but actually listening to a track, breaking it down and trying to understand what happens is the best way to take your production to the next level. So the song that we're going to be looking at is called... Hold on, I've forgotten, hold on. The song that we're going to be looking at is called Martin Garrix. I, I, I put the, the audio file in, but it didn't bring the name Mistaken. Martin Garrix, Matisse and Sadko, Feet, Alex Iris, Mistaken, Club Mix. Guys, make the name shorter. It's too long, there's way too many of you collaborating there. Who did what? Come on. I'm just kidding, it's a great track, but I couldn't remember it. So anyway, maybe I just don't listen to enough EDM. Rather than listening to the original track, I'm just gonna play you what I did. You can go ahead and listen to that by yourself if you want, but I also wouldn't want them to try and demonetize the video in case I decide to do that at some point in the future. Another thing, quickly, before we get started, is a yes, I have an L2 on the master, just so when I'm screen recording, it doesn't clip. And secondly, no, it's not mixed because, guys, if you are mixing your tracks too early on, and this is just my personal opinion, but this is honestly what I believe, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Make sure the production sounds great. When the production sounds great, all the mixing will fall into place. If you're slapping on EQs and effects way too early in the process, then you're not really focusing on the sound design aspect of your production. All right, so I started with the synthesizers. Something that these guys do is they have like one synthesizer following after the other. So different ones, but kind of in sequence. And I started with this sound here. Now you'll notice there are also a lot of layers. We'll get onto that in a second. Check it out. Love that. As an opening sound, very aggressive. It's got a lot of movement, a lot of modulation. I'm using Serum for this, and I'm pretty sure I just used a preset called Rev Bass Get Wrecked. I have some of the reveal packs, they sound amazing. So next I used Bit Crushy, that's just what I named it. So the growly part is only on the first section of this sequence. Together, they sound like this. See how there's like that big movement on the front and then you hear the second synth come through, but then the second part of that sequence, the dun dun, needed a bit of support too. So I put this pluck. And the pluck by itself sounds like this. Of course, it needed a layer, so I did this. Just a little kind of funky thing. Together, those sound like this. And that first bar all together sounds like this. Massive, that's great. I mean, I know it's only one bar, but already such a big difference. So some layers, but some layers used in a clever way. I got three parts there, one main sequence, which has two different separate layers on it. Now I gave all of these a sub, It's just a sub from Silence that I made with uh, sine wave and a bit of distortion. That was it. By itself sounds like this. Now in the melody, it's kind of going da, 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 da. It's going up and down an octave, but with the sub, when I made it go down an octave, it was too low. So I just kind of kept it on the same note. You'll be able to see it here. Simpler was better in this scenario and it still held some weight amongst all the other sounds. So, all together. Mm -hmm. 
Now, obviously, you can hear the sub playing some other notes, which are those other synth filler bits. So let's go to the first one. We've got this one here. And this was just like a little filler in between the kind of two main synth sections coming in. So the first one that I just played you, and then the second one coming up. It's like, you know, it just kind of fills in the gap. And then we've got this trance middle layer too. So check it out. Love that trance. It kind of takes it from one aggressive synth to this more euphoric place with higher frequencies and more presence. Again, I just listened to the original track and tried to copy as best I could. Now, when you are recreating or copying a track, the, one of the main things to do is don't get hung up on the fact that you don't have the same preset. If you're looking for the same preset or the exact same sound that that person has, you're gonna get bogged down really, really quickly and you're not gonna enjoy the production process. So find something that's similar. That's, and you know, and it doesn't have to be exactly the same. It just has to sound cool and it has to have that feeling and that emotion. Is it aggressive? Is it trancey? Is it, you know, whatever it is that you think works, is fine as long as it sounds good. It doesn't have to be the same. So let me play this trance sound quickly, just one sound and then the layer. And then the layer, which is the octave up. So you'll see on the first part of the trance bit, it's just kind of at this note here. And then to make it a bit more exciting on the second time round it comes in, which is just half the length of the sequence it's up the octave and that just like reattaches your you know your attention to that synthesizer without it sounding boring and then you're not having to put in a million things okay so let's play where we're at so far notice how everything falls into one another it's kind of this bit here then this bit here then this bit here then this bit here and they kind of they come round and this is over a two bar loop so there's a lot of detail in here not all the synths are leads some of them are kind of sitting in the background and helping support what's meant to feel dominant. See what I mean? Okay, one last synth, which I felt was really key, is something I called Aggie Lead. Again, guys, these are all Serum presets. And the reason I'm not opening Serum is just because of what I said before. I don't want you to be like, oh, where's that preset that Fab used? I want you to find your own presets and follow a similar style when producing like this. You know, for similar sequential style of synthesizers playing against each other. Okay, let's listen to the Aggie lead. Let's just solo that. Again, aggressive, kind of drawing your attention to something else before something else comes in. All together. Nice sequence of synths, which sounds really good. Now, the next thing I moved on to were actually the effects. So I did the drums last. The drums are awesome and actually kind of simple to be honest, but it took me about an hour and a half to two hours to get this synth sequence together. I spent a lot of time making sure the sounds worked together. Again, didn't touch any cue, didn't bother mixing mastering because if the production is good, then the mix will be even better. Right, effects, uh, a lot of cashmere stuff, pulled these all out of Splice. He obviously makes the most amazing samples. One is something on the front end, which was just this horn, which sounds like this. Classic, I thought that was uh, that was perfect. Again, guys, I copied this from the, uh, the original and uh, it, it just sounded good. It just sounded good, you know, in the original, I couldn't find exactly the same horn, found something similar, put a fade on it, controlled it, made it end sooner rather than having this kind of big reverby tail gives a bit more impact on the front and a bit of white noise as well. Now I also cut up the white noise and put it in some of the gaps as you can see here this kind of ch -ch, that really helped fill up a bit more extra space in the background which I love. Then we have this synthesizer blast let's play that. Now that one's really quiet but I felt like it added something I'll turn it up for you in a second. Cool little laser thing. Let's hear it in context a little bit louder. 
too loud and it draws your attention away. Just a little bit of it and it's kind of like, oh, there's something cool going on in the background. Remember, not everything has to sit up front. Some things can be a bit further behind that keep the listener guessing and, uh, you know, make other producers interested in what you're up to. Martin Garrix, if you do watch this, maybe I got it wrong and you can correct me and Matisse and Sado and all the rest of you on that track. Is it Sado? Did I get that right? Sadko, sorry, sorry. Uh, laser burst, again, another little effect here. Can you hear that? I'll turn it up. Again, really loud, takes away the attention, doesn't sound very good. Classic little whoop on the front, always great to have a vocal, gives a bit more of a sort of signature sound. And then towards the end of the two bars, I wanted to sort of start putting some fillers. So I put, to be honest, this is called Audio 21, so I'm not sure where it is, but we're gonna find out. Let me just solo just these ones. Okay, so there's a woo, a go, and uh, what's this one? Reverse symbol, that's what it is. I probably reversed a symbol, that's why. Woo and go. Go, and together they sound like this. Go. As I get that symbol on the vocal, which kind of just brings it into the next section. Sounds quite good. And again, let's listen in context. See how it all starts to fall into place? And then the last section of the effects is again, another cashmere sample and this little thing here, which is, let's find out. Okay, again, a reverse thing. That has some uh, reverb on it. And I tell you what, I did put a low cut on this just because the low frequencies were annoying me. So that's again, I'm not mixing here. I would see a low cut as part of sound design and this cool reverse kind of tribal scream which sounded awesome so let's listen to those all together now with the effects pretty powerful already now i know that there could be more things that go into this but i felt like that was okay for now maybe when i come back to it next week i will add some more things with that client Okay, let's look at the drums, which are the simplest part, to be honest. We've got a kick, okay, which I probably will layer. Great sounding kick, nonetheless. Then I've got this, uh, this kick layer, which comes in in the second half. But we'll come, well, actually, tell you what, we'll come back to the second half in a, in a bit, because things develop, more synths get added, and so on. So, we've got the kick. Then we've got these uh, snares, which I call Tim Tim, because they're like Tim Tim Tim, whatever. Just, just my thing, okay? What I did here was I found a tom rather than a snare, and I felt like because it didn't have the kind of white noise on top, that it felt better as a rhythm, and then I layered it with a snare anyway. So they're kind of supporting each other. Layers are so important. If you can layer your sounds, they're really gonna sound much thicker, much fuller, and if you can get those layers right, it just makes the whole mixing thing a hell of a lot easier. Check it out. Now I'm gonna pull one of them out, okay? I'll get rid of the kick, I'm gonna pull one of them out and put the other one back in and you'll notice the difference. See how it has a lot more knock to it? Okay, then we have this snare fill. That's towards the end of phrases and towards the end of the kind of eight bars, it does this. Little fill, why not? And that's also matched by a verby snare and then a snare that with verb that I cut that sounds kind of big and epic, like one of those EDM snares. Kind of cool, no? All right, so honestly, that was the drums. Now in the second half, they develop a little bit because you've got to make things a bit more interesting. So let me play you what the difference is in this section here. So you can hear immediately that I put a clap and a ride cymbal on top of the kick. So before the kick just sounded like this, 
which was really nice because it gives the synths some room to breathe. One of the biggest mistakes is that people put everything on the first drop. And the problem with that is that then you don't have anything to build into. So make some space. If your production is good enough and everything's working, you shouldn't need to throw everything in at once. Okay, kick, kick clap. And then the crash. So it has more emphasis on that beat, which is really, really, really dope. The only other thing that really happened in the second half was I put this other synth, which I named Whoop Whoop. And uh, it just, again, added some more attention to some of the synthesizers and showed that it was progressive, that it was developing in the second half of the track. So check it out. That was it. That was cool. You know, they had a whoop whoop synth in the original and it sounded really good. I couldn't find the same preset again. I went with what I thought sounded cool. So, all together, it sounds like this. Now, there is a little break that you'll notice. I did like a cut. I cut the first beat out when it came to the second eight bars because just gave it a, a second to breathe and then smack back into the beat. And there are some rises, of course, at the end and a fill. So, what I'll do is I'll play it from... Let's go from... Let's give it two bars and in. Okay guys, I hope you found that useful. I know it was pretty quick, but the thing is I don't want to get too in depth because I don't want you to get married to exactly what I'm doing and trying to copy that. At the end of the day, I did use a lot of presets. Now I know how to use synthesizers, so I tweaked those presets to my liking and uh, you know, found the kind of right filter settings, right amplitude envelope settings so that the layers sat well together. But like I said, there's no mixing on here. I did put kickstart a lot on the channels because I wanted that kind of push and pull feel. But again, I wouldn't consider kickstart mixing. That That is there to create that sound design push and pull. And you can also do that in Serum with the Adafo tool if you want. If you don't have kickstart, there are some other options. So I'm not an EDM producer, but I did my best to recreate the Martin Garrix mistaken club mix. Would love to know what you guys think if there are some EDM producers out there. Um, you know, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think I could have done better because I realized that there were maybe some gaps or maybe some tricks and tips that you would be using that maybe I just haven't clocked onto. I probably will do a video on mixing something like this at some point because I'm sure you'll all find it useful. So look out for that one. But it's been a pleasure as always and a big love for noise. Before you go, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and go follow me on, uh, let's put it on this side. Let, go follow me on Instagram. I'll get the Instagram thing to come here and like scroll and look all fancy, okay? Peace. And then you'll see here on the second half, I do one octave up and then one octave down just for a small change in difference. So I'll show you the MIDI and I'll play it back to you. No, actually that's all the same, I lied.